Dawn is a, a brand new map uh, by the designers here at the Coalition, and we're really excited to bring it to Gears fans. It's a really uh, fantastically rich map. It has all sorts of qualities to it that all layer over top of each other. It's got great support fights, it's got great key fights. Dawn really embodies a high risk, high reward philosophy. Players can fight for the bar fight on the one hand side of the map and that's going to have a view over a lot of the map. So once you win it, you can hold it and you can use it to your advantage. But the cover on the other side of it is linked in such a way that players that have great movement can actually get by while only exposing themselves a little bit to the torque that's above them. The drop shot, the kind of most powerful signature weapon on the map, is down in that hole. So that means that interplay between the two really creates a really tense dynamic. So it kind of creates this almost Thunderdome aspect of the middle of the map, right? You really have to both time your entry into it as well as be able to fight your way out to exert a lot of map control. In addition to providing a really rich gameplay experience, Dawn has a really rich visual experience. It's set in this mountain pass where the outsiders have found this old giant cog mining facility and they've retrofitted it with a living space. They're really trying to reclaim by finding a place that's sheltered from the winds as well as any other threats that might come their way. When we started Gears 4, we always knew that we wanted to bring back the entire legacy. We wanted a Gears 2 map that was one of the most different in the entire Gears history, right? and security was that. Gears 2 maps are some of the hardest to bring forward to Gears 4. The modes in Gears 2 were very different than Gears 4, so we had to make sure that every map that we built played really well with all of the modes, so that meant re-examining every corner of the map we wanted every fan to come back and really recognize this map and see it updated and modernized. One of the things that we changed is these laser fences. So there's switches within the map that turn laser fences on and off. Controlled by the players and timed properly, they can lead to really interesting and deep strategies. And they lock down areas of the map so that there are little fights within the bigger fights. We've changed the mechanics of the security fences for different modes. And for the classic modes like Execution and TDM, it'll be pretty much the same as it was inside Gears 2. However, for Horde and for Escalation for King of the Hill, we've made tweaks so that it plays really well in each of those modes. For Escalation and King of the Hill, the front of the laser fences is deactivated. You still have control over the rest of them, but the front ones allow for a lot more free movement into the center rings. For Horde, we've inverted the whole idea of the laser fences. What that means is that when you're being attacked, you have control when they go on instead of being able to control when they go off. And that gives players a whole other layer of strategy when they're playing Horde. The map is a very personal map. You have to get very close. You see your enemy and you're going to like know who you're getting engaged with. What makes security so special? It has interesting one-on-one -on -one fights and is a very intimate map. Security in Gears 4 is a really lavish gold depository. In addition to the big ostentation set pieces that we've got in there, there's also little tiny details like security cameras and little embedded stories. It's one of our favorite maps internally. It, it, we think it plays really well in a lot of different modes and we're really excited to bring uh, our first Gears 2 map to, to fans of Gears of War 4. Did you see that?